Well, with assisted suicide becoming legal in more U.S. states, the question is, will health insurance or insurers be reaching a grim conclusion that it's a lot cheaper to kill patients than to pay for their treatment? It might be happening already. Nevada physician Brian Callister says he had two patients, both in need of life-saving treatments, but the patients were from Oregon and California, two states with assisted suicide laws. According to Dr. Callister, the patient's insurance company said they wouldn't cover the treatments and instead they'd only pay for the patient's suicide drugs. Charles Krauthammer is a writer and columnist and joins us now. Charles, this is, this is all we know about it. We don't have proof this is true. The physician says it's true. But this does seem like something we might want to be worried about given the relative cost of killing someone and treating them. Shouldn't we be concerned? Absolutely. Look, there are a lot of arguments against assisted suicide. And the main arguments come out of Holland. Holland is the pioneer for assisted suicide. They allowed this about 10, 20 years ago. And the slippery slope is terrifying. It starts out, of course, they say all we're trying to do is to alleviate the pain of terminal patients, right? That's, that's the yes. claim. And what you see what happened, it starts out that way in Holland. They end up on a, a yearly basis killing people who are not, uh, who, who are demented, who have no choice without consent in old people's homes because of quality of life. That's well known. And also the idea that it's only for terminal patients in pain. There's a famous case, I wrote about it in my book, of a woman who lost her two sons, was disconsolate, inconsolable, asked to be given assisted suicide, was, her doctor went on trial, because you're not supposed to do that, and of course was acquitted. Uh, this is where it goes. Now, we don't know how true the story is from this doctor, but it is clear that there will be pressure to save money. A dead patient is a cheap patient. Yes. And that's a very fast way to get there is assisted suicide. And also, there are subtle ways in which a doctor can suggest what you ought to be doing. Counseling you well, you ought to look at this. And people really put a lot of uh, stake. They really listen to their doctors as authority figures, particularly when they're in distress and in extremis. And they can have a huge effect on what the outcome is. So absolutely, look, you understand the, the sympathy people have for those who are really are dying. And of in course. Pain, and that's what drives the movement. But the dangers of it are staggering. And that's why I think on balance, even though I understand the push for it, it really should not be legalized. I, I certainly understand the push for it, too. And you feel enormous compassion for people who are terrified in pain. Of course you do. But shouldn't there be some legal mechanism to prevent insurance companies from pushing for this? I'm sure there. Look, this sounds to me like a very unusual case. I've never heard of one like this before. I don't think it's an epidemic. That's why I think there are no legal restrictions. There, there are other things you want to look at first, which is the pressure of families who basically want to get rid of, of an course. elderly parent. So you need restrictions on that, people who will benefit financially. If this becomes rampant, I think we ought to put in strictures. I don't think it is. There's a lot more bad things that will come before it becomes an insurance Good. company uh, that's, issue. That's reassuring. Now, in the minute we have left, there's a story out of Milltown, Ohio, where a councilman there has said that the city might want to put a three strikes rule in effect for opiate ODs. We're not going to save you after the second time. What's your take on that? The councilman ought to look for other work. Uh, you know, I can understand the impulse. Here are people, they're, they're not, they're, the ingratitude sort of gets them. Yes. We saved you twice, we have to come back and do you a third time. Look, you can't let people die. That's a rule. It doesn't matter how bad they are, how selfish they are, how they respond. You don't let them die. If you have the, the naloxone, if you have the antidote, you give it. Now, what you could do is say, if you're on your third time, we're going to triple your community service, right. or we'll incarcerate you, or we'll attach to your earnings, or if you have any earnings. Yeah. But you don't deny the treatment. You can't let people die. That's a rule. Amen. That is a great rule. Charles, thank you.